Hi, my name's Josh from ActiSense. Some of you may have seen this panel before, but for those of you who haven't, I'm just gonna go through and give a quick overview and a rundown of each product that's on the board and give an example of where it would be used in a real environment. Some of you may have seen this at trade shows, or if you're coming to see us at Metz this year, this will be here as well. So in the middle of the network, the QMB, this is providing power to the network through the 12 volt supply that's connected at the back. And then we're powering left and right side of the backbone independently. On the QMB, we've got two fuses, again, one for the left side, one for the right side. There are four amps in here, but they can be replaced with up to eight amp fuses if we're using the thicker mini cable. We've got LEDs on here for power, power polarity, data, and fuses. So if one of those fuses blows, obviously it's quite hard to tell just from looking at a fuse visually, the LEDs will tell you if any of them have gone. Moving to the left, we have T-piece. So we have male, female, female connector on it. These are used to allow you to connect devices via drop cables to your backbone and can also be used with smaller length of cable to join them together to extend your backbone as well. So at each extremity of the backbone, one on the far left and one on the far right, we have a TERU. These act the same as the standard terminator that you would get, so male or female, whichever way it needs to be. But these also act as an inline terminator, so they can be put before a device at the extremity of a network if it's necessary. The main benefit of having a TERU is that there's an LED inside, which will either go green or red, depending on the voltage on the network. So if your backbone is below nine volts, it will go red, telling you there's a problem with the power at the extremity. If it's nine volts or above, it goes green. It's just a quick little visual indication to tell you that the power along the backbone is sufficient to power every device. So moving down from the T-piece with the drop cable, we have an NGW. So we've got three NGWs on the board and then there's an NGT over here as well. So the NGW is a bi-directional 0183 to 2000 converter. In this scenario, it's taking data from the output of one of our multiplexers, which I'll cover in a minute, converting it to NMEA 2000, and then outputting it onto the N2K network. So these are all doing the same thing. This one is acting as AIS, so it's at a different board rate. And then the NGT over here is acting as a 2000 to PC interface. So if I was to run NMEA reader on my laptop or any um, NMEA 2000 data viewer, we could take all of the data off of the backbone run it through the NGT into the PC. So down at the bottom of the board, we've got two products, the USG2 and the Pro NDC 1E. The USG2 is a PC to 0183 gateway interface, if you like. The benefit of using the USG2 is that it's fully isolated on both sides, so fully isolated from PC to device and from device to output to whatever is connected to it as a listener. On the USG2, we have three LEDs. The one up here just indicates that the device is powered on. It's powered from the USB. And then we have independent LEDs for both RX and TX to tell us if there's data coming in and or data coming out. Connected to the USG2 in this scenario is the Pro NDC 1E. So this is one of our new products. It is a fully type approved, robust multiplexer that is also capable of outputting 0183 over ethernet through here. So with this, we've got data being simulated from my laptop. It's coming out of the USG2 as 0183 data. We're feeding it into the input on the Pro NDC 1E here, and then we're outputting it into both of these NGWs. Now, in this, we are duplicating the data through each of them, but this is simply just to show utilizing both outputs, but we can see with the LEDs that they're running at different board rates and more data is coming through one than the other. So moving across the board, again, very similar scenario with the USG2 connected up to one of our products. Again, this USG2 is doing the same thing as the other one. We're just using it to output simulated data coming from the PC application, and then we're feeding it into the ProBuff2. So the ProBuff2 is another type approved robust device. This one is a buffer instead of a multiplexer. So the idea is that it takes data through one of one or both of the inputs, and then we can output it to up to 12 outputs. So again, data coming in, and we're outputting it through output one, connected to an NGW. This is simulating AIS data through, so different board rate, different data. 
and again, putting it onto the network for things like the W2K and the NGT to use. The ProBuff 2 is aimed at more of a professional environment due to the high number of outputs. Um, it again does 0183 over Ethernet streaming as well, the same as what we've seen on the Pro NDC. There is a non-intelligent, more leisure focused product, which is called the Pro MBF1, which is a smaller buffer. Um, again, it's type approved, but it just doesn't have the same level of, of intelligence as what you'd find in a ProBuff 2. Coming across to the other side of the board, so we have the W2K, which is our wireless NMEA2000 gateway. It's connected to the QMB, again, as are all of the other devices, all connected then to the NMEA2000 backbone. So the W2K wireless gateway is a, in one form, is a data logger. So it has an internal SD card that logs every single bit of data that goes through your N2K network. As standard, it has an eight gig SD card, but it is expandable up to 128 gig for those of you who have very busy networks or you want to log for longer periods. It can also be used as a diagnostic tool using ActiSensei, which is part of the firmware, which is within the device. So when you connect to the W2K, you can go into the ActiSensei part and you'll see the diagnostics and things like battery monitoring. And then its main function, if you like, which is actually acting as a wireless gateway, so it takes your NMEA2000 data and outputs it wirelessly in a number of different formats to you know, things like iPhones, tablets, laptops, whatever it is that's connected up to it to receive the data. The main format that this is used in is NMEA2000 to 0183. And this contains the same conversion gateway and sorry, the same conversion matrix as what you would find in an NGW, just this is outputting without a serial connection. On the device, again, we've got a couple of different LEDs. So we've got a power LED, which is telling you that the device is receiving power. We've got an RX and TX LEDs independently, telling you that the device is both receiving and transmitting. And then a status LED, just indicating if the device is operating properly or if there's you know, an issue with too much data being output or you know, not enough um, data coming in or too much data coming in, whatever it might be. Finally, on the other side of the board, we have the EMU-1. So this is an analog to digital engine monitoring unit. Through this setup, we're running a simulator, which we're essentially generating analog signals through these variable controls. And then they're being fed into the EMU, which the EMU will then convert into digital data and output it via NMEA2000 PGNs onto the NMEA2000 network. So the EMU has a lot of capability. It's a very powerful tool. Um, we've got things like the custom gauge tool within it. It can support two engines through one EMU and it can work directly from sender if the gauges aren't present or they need to be removed. And then what we would see on an ME2000 network from the data being fed from the EMU is typically you would have an MFD. So we've connected up a little Garmin display just to show you the engine data that's being output. And then we can see that by adjusting these, we change the values independently.